Hey, it's Michael Mansell, and I'm bringing to you today an amazing TV that Samsung is just releasing. This is called the Samsung Frame, or The Frame, and you're gonna find out all the little details about it, what I found out by having it on my wall for about five days now, and what I like about it and what I don't like about it, what I think Samsung got right, and what I think I like to see them improve. So, let's check it out. So here's the 55 inch version of the Samsung Frame. And right now I'm just running Apple TV. This is the Apple TV 4 running on it. And it, this is one of their built-in screensavers, which does look pretty good on it. Now, currently all you see here is the dark gray metallic frame that ships with the Frame TV. Now there is the 55 inch version and then there is the 65 inch version. The 65 inch version is gonna run you about 2,799 retail and this 55 inch version is going to cost you $1,999, which is pretty much on par when it comes to the cost of a higher end quality ultra HD TV. But I will have to say that the image quality of the 4K resolution would be more on par with say a $1,000 to $1,500 high definition 4K TV that Samsung is producing. So you certainly are paying for some of the features that I'm gonna be talking about here that are related to the actual aspect of it being a frame and very picture-like on the wall. Now let's get into that because I've got right here the additional frame accessories that you can order separately. Now I did find it a little bit disappointing that Samsung chose not to ship at least one of the frames, considering it is the frame TV with the TV unit, but I'm sure they were doing that to keep the price point because when you see these frame pieces, you're gonna realize how high end and high quality they really are, which I was very impressed with. So let's take a look at that, and before I go into the art mode, I'm gonna show you these frame pieces. Now the frame pieces uh, ship separately, and they come in a uh, beige, oak, like you see here, a walnut, a white, and they're talking about bringing out other colors as well, and they certainly showed off several of those at the CES show this year. This here is the beige oak, and you can get a close-up of that there. You can see that this has a very nice wood grain appearance to it, and certainly is a very high quality frame. Now, the Samsung logo really is only on one corner of it, and I did appreciate the fact that they chose to keep their logo and branding off of the actual front of the TV, which helps with the aesthetic of it. So these pieces are very easy to put on. They're all magnetic and they snap right onto the side just like that. They do tell you, however, to put this bottom piece on first. So let's go ahead and put that on. And this lines up on the bottom with the only exposed electronic component underneath here, which I believe is for the remote receiver. The sides snap on just like that. And then finally the top piece comes here and snaps on just like that. So you can see how easy it is to switch out the frame, which is really great. Samsung has additionally sent these little clips that snap right onto the back sides of the frame if you want to really secure the frame so that a child or somebody doesn't just easily come over here and say, pop one of them off, which they're not terribly easy just to pop off, but if you pull out, they will just come right off like that. Samsung did make the wise choice to ship the TV with a wall mount because at the end of the day, you're going to typically hang this on the wall. They do have an additional accessory, which is more of a floor stand tripod frame that would allow you to place it anywhere in the room. And it does ship with these little feet, which are very basic, and they just slide right up into the base of the TV. And uh, actually, no screws required. They just slip right up in, friction held in, and those are kind of nice as well. Okay, let's get into the actual features of the art mode of the TV. This is uh, one of the main reasons that I was excited about it because this room right here that we have is very decorated in terms of artwork and pictures and it's, it's our second living room. And I used to have a very black, dark, always off, always dark, always black Sony TV that did have an articulating arm on it, which was nice, but it stuck out from the wall and it wasn't very sightly in the room. It was really kind of the only thing in the room that looked out of place 
with the whole way that my wife had decorated this room. So this was a nice addition to the room because when it is on, and now it typically is always on with the art mode, it is very pleasing. Now right here you see a moving art, but let's actually switch over to the Samsung One remote here. This here is the Samsung One remote, and it's a very small, discreet remote. Comes in white. Kind of wish that it was in a different color other than white because white just stands out like a sore thumb on any type of counter or uh, dark wood table or corner table, but Samsung chose to go with white, and it is a very simple remote that does pretty much everything that you need with the exception of some of the art features that I'll explain here in a second that are much more in depth on the Samsung app itself. So when I push the power button uh, once, it turns the TV off from a typical and standard TV mode, but it switches over here into the art mode. And here I'm showing a picture rather than actual, say, painted art. And this is how it looks in the art mode. Now, Samsung did some really cool things here with sensors. And the sensor senses ambient light in the room, but it also senses motion in the room. The ambient light it senses is to dim down or brighten up the screen depending on the amount of light that is in this room. Currently, depending on the time of day, it adjusts accordingly so that it never looks like a bright TV or LED screen or picture, you know, electronic picture frame hanging on the wall, which of course is not the point. Uh, of this frame. I have found it to be fairly accurate throughout the day, but I have found myself going into the app during certain times of the day and adjusting the brightness, as I'll show you here in a second, that you can do that gives a little bit more of a realistic appearance because there were certain periods of the day where I just felt like it was too bright. The screen was too bright and I toned it down, or in some cases it was too dark and I had to increase it. So hopefully with firmware updates, they will improve that over time. Currently, it does what I would consider to be a good job, but not a perfect job. The second sensor that it has in it is the motion sensors. This feature is very cool, and that is that when it is turned on, when it detects that there is, say, no motion in the room for about 15 minutes, and you can actually change that from 15 minutes to four hours, it will turn the TV completely off, minus those motion sensors, because as soon as it senses motion in the room again, it automatically comes back onto art mode, showcasing your pictures or your artwork. This is a nice feature to further conserve energy and just have it shut down and have the screen off. Probably will prolong the life of the screen as well when you have that setting on because, let's face it, if you're going to work for eight hours, you don't really need the screen on for eight hours while you're at work, unless maybe you know your dog likes to see pictures of itself up on the TV screen. Um, one other cool feature is the night mode or the dark mode where at night when all, you turn off all the lights in your house, it can sense that and just automatically turn the TV off when, it's, uh, when you turn off all the lights in the house, which I love that feature because I've got my entire house automated as it is. So I push one button in my master bedroom, which changes all the settings for going to sleep, turns off all the lights, and then consequently the TV turns off as well. Okay, let me illustrate a few of the features here that you can do with inside of the art mode. One of the options is you can come in here just by pushing the select button and quickly switch to a different picture. Currently, I'm just showing you some pictures that I've uploaded through the app to the TV and now they're saved on there. This is a neat feature right here with the mats. You have lots of different options with the mat. Not only the color you can change, but also some of the uh, collage options that are built in I found to be pretty neat. This one here, you can take a single picture and break it out into three images just by placing the mat over it. Similar to how you would use a uh, clipping mask in Photoshop, but the TV does it all for you. So you can get kind of creative with that. You can also do it, of course, without any mat on it. And in this case here, this is a more of a panoramic picture. This is what's called a shadow box. A little hard to see here on the TV, but tons of different options within here. Now let's go into the actual collection of pictures that ships with the TV, and that's called the Samsung Collection. The Samsung Collection gives you tons of different categories to choose from initially. There's landscape, architect, wildlife, action, and so on. Um, if we were to choose really more of a traditional piece of artwork rather than a picture, give you an idea of what that would look like on there, we could easily just switch to that and now that's set. And you'll have to admit, in, even in the video here, this does look like a very nice, pleasing piece of artwork on the, the wall, rather than a hideous TV that's black doing absolutely nothing. 
So in that aspect, it is very impressive. I was a little skeptical about all the uh, promotional videos that Samsung was putting out because they could have easily simulated those. But I gotta say, I believe them now, now that I've seen it on the wall itself and how impressive it does change the brightness, change the tone of the screen itself and really adjust and adapt to the light in the room, making it look like a piece of artwork. So a couple more options inside of the TV itself, just through the remote, and that is we can take the piece of art and say we want to add a modern mat to it. We can simply go there, choose our mat that we want, switch up the color. Maybe this artwork, we should have a bluish grayish tone mat around it. You can get creative. You're the artist in this case and we can select this and set it as the artwork. And now that same piece of art has a nice map put around it. The colors that are built in here, in my opinion, are a little limited, and I'm really hoping that Samsung will give us more color options because currently all you can do is choose from the predefined color options that are inside of the software. So I'm hoping that they give us more color options just so we can be even more creative depending on the decor that you already have in the room. One other option here with the mat is what they call the shadow box and the shadow box. And this one does a little bit of a shadow around the image itself rather than a mat, making it look like it's in a glass shadow box. Now, while we're on the topic of glass, one of the things I was a little hesitant about was the idea that there is the, the screen is semi-reflective, making it look a little bit like glass on the front of here. And I didn't know how that would really translate into the artwork as it's hanging on the wall, because in my opinion, I thought maybe a, a matte finish would have blended in a lot better and looked more realistic. But at the end of the day, I think Samsung got this right because this definitely makes the artwork, the pictures that you're hanging, uh, on, hanging on the wall look a lot more uh, sharp and represented and crisp and real in my opinion because they get that little extra punch that a glass or a reflective screen does offer. There are some angles in this room with the sliding glass door that we have and the windows that you can pick up those reflections. But at the end of the day, some of our other artwork that's hanging in the room does have glass over the image. So nothing different than any other piece of artwork or a picture hanging on the wall. That is about it from an option standpoint inside of the TV itself. There is one more option in here and that's called the art store and you can subscribe to be a member of the art store. It comes with 30 day free trial and then after that it's gonna be $4.99 and that's gonna give you all of the updated artwork and obviously if you went out and purchased these artwork and hung it on your wall, you would be paying a whole lot more for the, the artwork, but this does vastly expand the amount of options you have when it comes to showcasing various pieces of art on the TV. And again, super simple, super easy to select whatever piece of art you want and display that right on the TV. So there's a few look at the ins and outs of the art mode on the TV itself. Now let's switch over to the mobile app and I'll show you some of the options that we have inside of the mobile app. Okay, so when you first load up the app here, you're gonna see that it defaults to the Samsung collection. Now one note here is that I did find the, the app crashes often when you're first in loading it up if you have not connected to the, your Wi-Fi network yet. It does communicate via Wi-Fi and the app itself is called Smart View. And when I was opening that up, I did find that it crashed a couple of times before it actually stayed up. Now, that could be just because it's new and they're still adding uh, and fixing some bugs to it. Interestingly enough, I did not find it crashing or have as many bugs on the iOS version of the app, but this Samsung S8, which should have no issues running this type of app, of course, uh, did find it to be a little bit buggy. So I'm hoping the Samsung fixes that and improves some of those issues. The Samsung collection is pretty vast and I did go ahead and do the three, 30 day trial. So I do have quite a few more selections in here than you might get if it was just shipped and you're just now opening it. But there is quite a few options in here to start with. You can of course scroll over to your collections and then the art store as well. And I just wanted to show you in the app here how easy it is to add new pictures to your collection and install them on your TV. So in the Samsung collection here, if we were to say go to this image right here, and even when you're in this image, you can cycle through various ones. So say we changed our mind and we want to do this Cody image, we could and see right here, as you can see, here's an example of some of the bugginess 
that I had cur uh, previously been experiencing. Let's try this again. Okay, there we click on the mat. We can select to either have no mat, a shadow box, or the modern mat. Let's pick the modern mat. Click the forward button up here. And here we can select what mat color we want. And just on the app itself, it gives you a preview. It does not do it in real time, which I'm hoping maybe down the road it would do it in real time because it is a little cumbersome to do it all on the phone and then send it to the TV just to see whether or not you like it because quite frankly, it's gonna look differently on your mobile device than it is on the TV itself because they're two different screens. They're gonna represent them differently. The little gear icon in the upper right, you'll see here where we have the option to change the brightness of it and we can change the brightness of the TV, making it lighter or darker. And you might need to adjust this depending on the artwork. If it's a little bit dark, if it's a bit light, you can adjust this to suit your own personal preference. This is not you know, something that needs to be specific. And then down here, you'll see that there's the sleep after option that I was talking about. We currently have it set to be 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, it's going to, after 30 minutes of no motion detected, it will then switch back off. After 30 minutes of no motion detected in the room, it will switch the TV off. And then the night mode, which I already talked about, uh, and the motion detector sensitivity that you can do. You can also do sound mirroring for Bluetooth audio to the TV as well. So there's some of these settings that I did not find anywhere in the TV itself. Maybe Samsung will add that as an option later down, or maybe I just quite frankly could not find it. But if I could not find it after exploring it for five days, either I'm just a little bit uh, slow, or Samsung did not put it in a very clever place. All right. So in the app store here, or the, excuse me, the art store, uh, it is the art app store at this, in this case. If we were to go over and select a piece of art, let's take this picture right here. We could set this on the TV itself, click view on frame, and there you see that quickly I can add that. And it's very simple and intuitive to add it directly from your device. If, for instance, though, I wanted to put a picture from my own, uh, device or my mobile, then I could go down here and say, for instance, we could go into this image here, which is a vertical image, probably not going to look the best on the TV, but we can come up here to the little three icons, choose a mat. In this case, we're going to do a shadow box. I'm going to do black because I think that's going to look the best with the vertical image. And then here, what they give you the option to do is actually tilt the phone horizontally. And you can then, with your fingers by pinching and zooming it, you can change kind of the cropping of the image that you want. I kind of like that right there. And then we can click Save or we could have previewed it. I'm going to save it. Now we can click on set. This will set the art mode. Click the view on frame. Another little pet peeve there. You actually have to save the image to the TV first by setting it, and then you have to click the button view on frame to actually view it up here. I kind of think that it's a little bit given that if we're you know, doing something on the phone here that we want to see it up on the frame, but maybe not. Maybe Samsung wanted to give us the ability to just sit there and add a bunch of images to the TV without necessarily changing what's on the TV itself. So that would be my kind of reasoning behind that. So here you can see that image is up there on the TV. Uh, I don't know that that now goes with the decor of this room anymore, but I think it looks pretty cool. And finally here, I just want to illustrate how nice this is just hanging on the wall. It does ship with the no gap wall mount, which I love the fact that Samsung just included that. It makes total sense. You're going to end up hanging it on the wall like this. Uh, and that no gap wall mount really is that. It, you, there's no gap. Uh, if you hang it right and you follow the instructions that are in the box, there will be no gap between the wall and the TV itself. They do make some accommodations if you want to give a little bit of space back there. Maybe you need to run some cables. Maybe you don't want it right up against the wall. Uh, maybe you want to just pitch it a little bit away from the wall so that it, it gives the appearance that the artwork is hanging on a wire or something of that nature. Like a lot of larger pictures will tend to be a little bit pitched and hanging away from the wall. So let's take a look at that. To pitch or angle the TV out, you grab the top and the bottom and just pull from the top 
and that will slowly slide the TV out just like that. And then on the side here, you can see that there is some nice access to the back. Maybe you've got some components like I did. There was no place for me to put the components itself. Now do note that the TV does ship with Samsung's invisible cable. It's a very thin, clear cable that ships with the TV. And that's the idea that you can connect to the One Connect box, set that separately someplace else, and keep it very minimalistic on the wall. In my case, I went ahead and put all of the components in the back side here so that it was nice and tucked away. I actually cut a, a hole in the wall so that I could nicely set all of my components back behind there so that they were out of the way. And let's see if we can get a nice little view here of that no gap wall mount. And you can kind of see there the no gap wall mount that's behind it there and how I've tucked all of my components back there. And there's that one connect box that gives you access to all of your ports on the TV, which is a nice feature because if they were on the back side of the TV, even with the tilt that is given here, they would be a pain to reach. At least here I can get in there and access those ports. You may just be putting the one connect box in a separate location, easier to access them, but that was my solution. Plenty of air ventilation through this open slotted wall on the back side of the TV here, so I thought that was a good option. Um, and it worked out that the original plaster wall that was behind the drywall here was exactly one and a half inches deep, and this one connect box is about one and a half inches in height. So that made it very convenient and allowed me to still put the TV up against the wall. And as you can see, I can just push this back and it will slowly move back. And there we have it. So in closing, I am very pleased with the overall features of the frame itself. I don't think that it really is the best quality 4K TV. You can certainly get a much higher end 4K TV for the money if that's specifically what you're looking for. But if you want a very nice 4K TV that is also going to double as a piece of art on the wall and look aesthetically pleasing in the room when you're not in the room or when you're in the room and you walk into the room and you want to see some pretty artwork instead of just a boring black screen this certainly does the job for a long time i've had the idea and wanted to put a frame or something around the, the regular tv but at the end of the day you're still just putting a frame around a black tv the samsung art mode that they have on this tv is certainly impressive I do think, however, they're going to be bringing this art mode to some of the other Samsung TVs that they're going to be releasing, which will give you that option, but I doubt that it will have all of the motion and ambient light sensors built into it, and certainly won't have that very discreet frame-looking edge option that the Frame TV itself offers. So if you're looking for a nice decorative piece of art to hang on your wall, I highly recommend the Frame TV. I have put some links in the description of this video here if you want to go check those out and the various places that you can purchase this TV from. Give me a like or a comment or both on this video. I really appreciate that. And let me know what you think. I'm just giving you my average consumer opinion on this. It's obviously not a professional marketing video. So you can certainly go ahead and criticize me for any of that as well. Happy to get the comments, but just know I'm just another person out here giving you my opinion. Um, I was not paid by Samsung at all to do this review. And so it's just my thoughts and ideas on it. If you like this video and want to see more about my opinions, I do love technology. So there's plenty of other videos that I could create on my opinion of my other technologies that I have in my house and in my business. And I'd be happy to do more videos if you like this video. So let me know in the comments below. Until next time, Michael Mansell from Tucson, Arizona, signing out.